Not that Jesus Christ was not concerned about what the Jews was going through with the Roman Empire, the oppression of the Roman Empire, because the Jews was being dictated by the Romans who worshiped more than one God. They was called polytheism, which means to worship more than one God. They was worshiping these false gods, Zeus. Uh, they was worshiping the gods that the Greeks worship, false gods, it's spelt with a lowercase g, okay? Where the Jews is worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, the God who gave Moses the commandments on Mount Sinai. Now, according to the Hebrew Torah, it was 613 commandments that God had gave Moses on Mount Sinai. Not just only Ten Commandments. So now, the Jews expected for Jesus, especially the, the Zealots, who was a Jewish army, who rebelled against the Roman Empire, they was hoping that Jesus would use his miraculous power to overthrow the Roman Empire and set them free from their dictatorship. But Jesus came preaching love. Jesus came preaching forgiveness. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me, according to St. John chapter 14, verse 6. So they didn't understand why would Jesus not use his power to overthrow the Roman Empire. So they didn't understand that because it was prophesied that the Messiah would come to set them free from the oppression of the heathens. They understand that Jesus came to die for our sins. It did not mean he was not concerned about the Jews at that time, but they didn't understand that Jesus knew there was a place called hell. Yes, we got hell here on earth, but hell beneath the earth is even worse than hell here on earth. The Bible talks about hell. In the book of Isaiah chapter 5, verse 14, it said hell has enlarged itself without measure because Adam and Eve had messed up in the Garden of Eden. You, you know the story. They have sinned against God, and because of that, they was put out the Garden of Eden because of their disobedience. So every baby that was born was born in sin. That's why under the law of Moses, the priests, uh, they had the priests and the people offer up lamb's blood for the washing away of their sins under the law of Moses. But look what the Bible says. St. John chapter 1 verse 7. It said the law was given by God to Moses. The law came from Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ was concerned about the inner man. Whether you call him Yahshua, HaMashiach, or Jesus, or Jesus Christ, I'm not talking about Zeus, we're talking about Jesus. He already knew that when the body go back to the dust, the soul is going somewhere. It's either heaven or hell. There is no purgatory. Praise the Lord. We're all going to stand before God after the body go back to the dust. That's why the Bible declares in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what are you saying, preacher one? Although... The white races had enslaved us, our people. We must understand that it was black people that was killing each other in Africa way before the white races even put our people on the slave ships. Black people was killing each other in Africa way before then, just like this black on black crime right now. Yes, I'm against racism. Yes, I'm against what the uh, Ku Klux Klan did. But we must understand not every white man is racist. We got black people calling each other niggas every day. You're not my nigga. You're supposed to be my brother. You're not my nigga. You're supposed to be my sister. So how is it we did not learn how to stand together and how to love one another and how to pray for each other and we in the year 20, 2023 and still killing each other? So you must understand this thing go beyond race. This thing goes beyond just racism. It is a spiritual warfare that's going on between the devil and God because Satan want you to worship him he don't want you to worship Jesus of Nazareth he don't want you to worship God because the devil wants to be God but he know he cannot be God because God put Lucifer out of heaven now his name is Satan and the demons and the angels that followed Lucifer is now called demons so this go beyond race this go beyond color that's why Jesus said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son huh, that whosoever believes in who in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved you must understand that hell is real so after uh, we die after the body go back to the dust the soul is going somewhere is either heaven or hell every race is going to stand before God the devil don't care whether you black white Jew Indian or Chinese he's out to steal kill and destroy but thank God that Jesus said I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly racism is of the devil but the devil himself is not racist 
Many of you don't believe that Satan is real. You can say that we got the white devil, we got the black devil. Yes, we got white devils, but not every white person is a devil. And we got black devils, but not every black person is a devil. We got black people killing each other every day. We got devils in every race. They are called human devils. But there's a devil that's even worse than the human devils. His name is Satan. The devil don't want you to believe that he's real. He don't want you to believe that God is real. But how can you believe that God is real and don't believe that the devil is real? It is a spiritual battle that's going on between good and evil. How can you not see it? You can turn on the news. The Bible says spiritual wickedness is in the high places. So the young man who talked about the tongues, the Bible talks about speaking in tongues in the book of Acts chapter number two on the day of Pentecost. When Jesus Christ went back to heaven, he told his disciples, go into the upper room so you may be endowed with power from on high. On the day of Pentecost, the 50th day, Pentecost means feast, they was up in the upper room. And the Bible said suddenly there came a sound, hallelujah, as a mighty rushing wind. We almost done. And it filled all the house where they were sitting at. And it was filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why you don't have to take no jug overdose. <laughs> all you need is a Holy Ghost. Giving the Holy Ghost is better than taking a jug overdose. That's why they got a song that goes. It was amazing grace. How sweet does sound. That saved a wretch like you and me. I once was lost, but now we found. I used to be blind, but now we see. Come on, tell somebody. I'm not going back to Egypt, but I'm going to the promised land. I'm not going to die in Egypt. Amen. And, and, and wander in the wilderness like God made Israel wander in the wilderness for 40 years because they was rebellious against God. The reason why God allowed our people to be in slavery, not just only the blacks, but even other races, because they were still worshiping idols, still doing witchcraft. Read the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 30. God was against Egypt. Egypt is in Africa. They were still worshiping statues and idols and doing witchcraft. When the Bible, God said, thou shalt not have no other God before me. I don't want to make God mad. Do you want to make God mad? I don't want to make God mad because God was the one who turned him over into slavery. Read the book of Zechariah, chapter number 2, verse 12. He was talking to Ethiopia. Ethiopia is Africa. He said, I'm going to turn him over to a sword. What, God did that? Yes, God did that. When the Bible declares in Isaiah, chapter 45, that God created good and evil, what that means is that God creates disaster. He sends disaster against the wicked. Like he sent the flood in the days of Noah. So now, what are you saying, preacher Warren? That's the reason why many times God allows slavery. Because First of all, God never ordained for us to be in slavery. God ordained for us to be free. But it's because of our rebellion against God. It's because of our wickedness against each other. Because of our jealousy that we have towards one another. Because we're killing each other. You're cheating on your wife. You're cheating on your husband. You're child molesting your child. This is why God sends his wrath to many people. Because a lot of people don't want to obey God. they rather follow the devil rather than follow God. So now when you reject God, God said, I will reject you. That's what the Bible says, my people which are called by my name. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse. 14, huh? which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. That means you got to be humble before you pray. Don't just pray, but obey. Amen. Oh, that's deep. A lot of folk pray to God, but don't want to obey God. So now you wonder why God don't answer the prayer because many of you just only pray when you get in trouble. And then when God begins to bless you, then you forget all about God. You don't say, Lord, I thank you. You're going back into devil worship. You're going back into your witchcraft, worshiping idols. It's not what God does. He doesn't answer everybody's prayers. He turned our people over into slavery because God was angry at Africa for doing all that voodoo, all that witchcraft, all that black magic. When the Bible declares in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31, what did God tell Israel? Regard not them who have familiar spirits, neither seek after the wizards. Wizards are male witches, for I am the Lord your God. Thou shalt not have no other God before me. So God was the one who turned Israel over into slavery. God did that. Until we turned back to God, then God would deliver us out of slavery. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. You don't need to take no drug overdose. When we turn back to God, God will deliver us out of slavery. When we repent from our sins and let the Lord live within and present our body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2, then God will deliver us out of slavery. Because God never intended for his people to be slaves. He said, I want to bless you. In the Deuteronomy 28, what did God say to Israel? I will bless you if you will keep my commandments. Mm, Lord, praise the Lord. So when they spoke in tongues on the day of Pentecost, that was a Holy Ghost that was speaking in a heavenly language. That was a Holy Ghost that was speaking in different tongues. And people from different nations was hearing the Jews speak in their language. Because the Jews at that time spoke Hebrew. 
They were speaking other people's languages. So they said, well, these people must be drunk. But Peter got up and said, these are not drunken as they suppose. But this is what the prophet Joel has prophesied. Hallelujah. He said, I will pour out my spirit. Huh? Upon all flesh. I feel like preaching. You don't got to go to church to praise the Lord. When God is in your heart, we the church. That's we can have church outside. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon what? All flesh. All flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see dreams and your old men shall dream dreams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ha! And all my handmaidens, they all oh my God, huh? they shall prophesy. They was speaking in people's languages. That was the Holy Ghost. That was the evidence that the Holy Ghost was there and speaking in tongues. That was not demonic. Now, if you know it's not demonic and you call it demonic, that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. That's what those tongues mean. So don't ever call the tongues demonic. When the Holy Ghost is speaking, it's a blessing. When the Holy Ghost have his way, it's a blessing. That's when demons begin to flee. Death begin to bow to Jesus. Huh? Because even death knows huh? that Jesus is a resurrection huh? and the life. He said, though he was dead, yet shall he live. Oh, Lordy, 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 Lordy. Lord. And he that believes in me shall never die. Mm, this big skeleton got to bow to Jesus. Huh? Death got to bow to Jesus. Huh? The demons will flee when Jesus come around. Huh? So when you got Jesus, huh? he said, greater, greater is he that's within you than he that is in the world. So I'm about to bring this thing to a close. Many of you about to get a nervous breakdown. You've been having a mental breakdown. I hear the Lord saying, you get ready to have a, a mental breakthrough. That's right. Ah, he right. said, yea, do you walk through the valley or the shadow of death? He said, fear no evil right. because God is with you. So when you get on God's side, God will get on your right. side. He's a lawyer in a courtroom. He's a doctor in a sick room. Amen. God will take you through. Yes, he will. The devil trying to give you a mental breakdown. I hear Jesus said, I'm going to give you a mental breakthrough. You're going to get a breakthrough. You don't got to smoke no weed. God is all you need. You don't need no drug overdose. All you need is the Holy Ghost. You don't need no crack. Run to where Christ is at. Get out the prayer mats. He'll set you free from crack and cocaine when you get in God's domain. When you get in God's domain, he'll set you free from crack and cocaine. Now you no longer have to be insane. Woo! Oh, I feel the whole, ain't that right? God bless you. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Don't kill yourself. Love yourself. Because God has smiled on you. God got a great plan for your life. Ain't that right, my wife? God bless. Let's go eat. Have a great time, y'all. Bless you.